Tom, why don't you tell us what your visions are for the future? My vision for the future is to see uh, the tribal communities working closer together. Uh, I'd like to see the tribal government and the tribal communities working closer together <coughs> so that everybody knows what um, people down in Pablo are doing and people in Pablo know what people down here are doing. Um, so people are more included into different things that are going on. Um, I'd like to see for the schools around here, I'd like to see more emphasis on our different languages, the Kootenai language and the Salish language. Uh, more emphasis on our traditional values, so that's included in school too. Kids get to talk about it, um, feel more proud to be an Indian, um, learn how to get jobs and everything on the reservation. Um, also for the youth, I'd like to see more activities for them to keep them busy so they are always getting into trouble. I mean, not all of them get into trouble, but the ones that do mostly are bored. Um, I would like to see better care of our elders. I see a lot of um, elders now needing doctor's appointments and having to get to the doctor, having no cars, trying to find rides in. Um, and oh, thank you. just everybody more in tune with our culture. And that's it. That's all I can think of. <laughs> Are there ways that you see the money from Kerr Dam is helping to reach some of those goals? Could it be used in ways that could uh, Yeah, I think it could be used. I don't really know how, but I know there's ways. Um, yeah, I could see that helping. Okay, thank you. <laughs> what direction do you like to see the tribes going? And that's the big question. And the second one, if, you, if there's anything you want to talk about, it, is just if the, if the income from the dam could be used to help with any of those things. There's ways that can be used. So. So. so ready to go? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. okay. Ask the first question okay. again. <laughs> well, tell us what your, your hopes mm -hmm. and visions for the future are. As a tri as the, a tribe as a whole, or for the cultural program, or I would say for the tribe as a whole. I'd like to see the tribe gain more control over the lands, of the reservation to try to um, buy out the non-Indians and uh, and to work continue uh, to pursue working with. Uh, um, grassroots level, keep them involved and keep, um, have them listen, you know, list, be listened to and because a lot of the grassroots people, you know, they, they know where they're coming from and I think that they can better um, give the tribal council better insight into what they're doing and where they're going wrong, if they are doing wrong, if um, they're doing you know, good to an, they would um, be an inspiration and and to the council by you know giving them a pat on the back every now and then. But mainly, I'd like to see the tribes purchase as much of the land back and gain control of it and possibly go into Aboriginal territory and start purchasing land. So hopefully that may, my dream is someday the Kootenai, the Flatheads will own all of Western Montana. All right. So that, that would be a big use for that money from the dam. 
just for that land, getting that land? Well, they could use some of that. Some of the mon money from the down, but majority of it I'd like to see go to the youth who are pursuing um, and bettering their education so that they can um, have good jobs and that they won't have to seek jobs off of the reservation. There's a lot of jobs here on the reservation that are um, that are in the hands of the non-Indian, where I, where the Indian people could be the ones working at those jobs. And that's what I'd like to see some of the money go towards. And <coughs> a lot of our children today are being handicapped because they have parent, both parents, so mother and father are working. And so that they can't work summer jobs because er everything that the tribes have now, the um, programs go according to um, income. And a lot of our youth aren't, aren't eligible for summer jobs because of the income of their parents. And I think that that's a hindrance to them because we as parents, I'm one of them. I have two children who's, who this is going to happen to, and it's already happening to. They can't get jobs on the reservation because of their father and my income. And I think it's a hindrance to them because we want to provide the best that we can, and that's why we're both working. And we want them to live better than we did when we were growing up. And yet, on the other hand, they feel bad because they try to put in for jobs and they can't because we earn, they say we earn too much money. And, I, and I'd like to see some of that money set aside for those, for those youths who are in this capacity and that can't work because their parents are trying to make a better living for them. But I'd like to like to see Kurdam money concentrate on the youth, further their education, regardless if um, their parents make thirty thousand dollars or if they make two thousand or if they're on welfare, or whatever. But give the youth a chance to go on to school. That's Thank you. Okay. Are we ready to go? Okay, so you could just talk about whatever your hopes or your visions. Well, I would like to see uh, the culture play a more important role in the tribal government. Because I think that the culture is the main, I don't know what you call it, uh, That's what we are, you know, if we lose our culture, we're, we, what are we? And I'd like to see that, and I'd like to see, uh, I guess, uh, some of that money used towards preserving our culture, like a tribal museum. We are working with the college on getting a repository, but I think that we need our own museum in order to get all these things that are stored in, you know, university basements, you know, to get all them back and have it on display on a, right here. <coughs> and I'd like to see more money going into the education, because I think we have to start concentrating on the youth and get them educated so that they can be working for the tribe and get more of them involved in the tribe. Because there's a lot of positions that we could fill with tribal members if we could get them educated. And we have to learn a way to get these kids to stay in school. And I think we should gear more to the children and concentrate on them and 
maybe that way in the future we could have all, you know, positions held by tribal members. What else? Is there anything more you wanted to add about, you were talking about the culture playing a stronger role in the government? Well, the language, we need to get out there and start teaching the language more. And I think, you know, our program is, we got limited funding. And we could use more money to train teachers and, so that we could have people out there into the communities and the schools to start teaching the language. You know, we have two language specialists here, but they're so busy with their own work that we just don't have time to get out into the communities and into the schools where we should be to teach. And like I said, our language is the most important part of our, our tribe. And another thing, you know, that I don't know if it's if I should bring it up here, but, you know, they're talking about that burial policy, that insurance. And I think, you know, that we should push that and try to get that. Because when we lose somebody, you know, like myself, we talked about it at the elders meeting a couple, the last time we had a meeting, and they brought that up. and. None of us, you know, want to be a burden to our family after we pass on. Like, I wouldn't want to saddle my kids with all my bills and stuff, and I think that that burial policy should be really pushed and spend some of the money on that. Or, you know, like they said, they'd hold out $50 on our per capita. But I think everybody should go for it because we have to think of our families after we're gone and not saddle them with a bunch of bills and worries. I don't know if this is a place to bring this up, but... Well, we have it now. <laughs> I don't know what else. Is there anything more you want to say about um, the use of the money from the dam as the tribes take it over? Well, I think mostly into education and into the preservation of the culture. Okay. Thank you. Well, I guess you can go ahead and talk about what your hopes are for the future. Well, all my hopes for the future lie with the youth. And I think that like the elders always say, you are tomorrow. But. <laughs> but they've never. <laughs> Don't give it to this guy. <laughs> but they've never given, you know, the kids anything. I don't think, you know, like. Okay. Okay, all my um, dreams for the future lie with the youth. I think more money ought to be spent on the youth from K through 12, not just higher education. Throughout the years, I've heard the elders say that you're our future, you're our tomorrow. But up to now, what have they given the future, their tomorrow? As far as I can see, nothing. The elders of this reservation, to me, have had the best of everything. Most of them have been allotted, and today they don't have any other land left. They got an elderly program, which provides them with mostly all their living needs. And what, what do our youth have? Nothing. They don't have anything to fall back on to help them further their education or even get started in the right way towards education. I 
also I think uh, that um, we need a more definite language plan. As far as I can see, all that I've done towards language, I don't see any speakers coming out of any of it so far, either Flathead or Kootenai. There isn't any one person that I know that came out of these classes being a speaker that can sit down and con converse with, with the elders. There isn't any. So I think that we uh, have to get our language going. We have to find a better way to do it so that it won't die because it's on its way out as far as I can see right now. Um, let's see. Do you have any ideas that way about different ways, could, different approaches that could be taken? Well, right now, I th the way I, I was thinking was there, there's, there, um, my age are, are, are older. They understand. They don't speak, but they understand. I think we got to start there and get them to be speakers because then there, there are potential teachers of the language are the people that understand but don't speak and I think that if we can get them speaking we'll have um, enough teachers to go around to all the different schools to the public schools to the college wherever and then you know then from there I feel that the language has a chance that one day that there will be people like me that don't understand be a fluent speaker. Are there other things besides language that you want to touch on? Not really. Okay. What about is there anything more you want to add about the use of the money from the dam? How you'd like to see that? Well, I'd like to see it um, used, like I said, for the youth, more of it. Not just for higher education, but lower education, K through 12, because then that's where you get your, your education, your chance to, to make it through college. Is, is in your early, early grades. And if you don't get a chance then, then you're not going to make it. And I think that more of the kids would make it if time and money was spent on them and making them aware of what's going to come, what they're going to come up against instead of waiting till they're, what, in high school? Maybe their senior year, then tell them, what do you want to be? You know? And then try to gear them towards that, then it's too late because they didn't take the right classes, they didn't, they weren't prepared to go further. So I think more money's got to be spent that way. And I don't see taking away the money from the elders, but like I said, they've had the best of everything that this reservation has provided from allotment on. Like that too. Okay. You could just tell us about what your hopes are for the future, your visions for how things can be. I don't know if we keep investing the way we have been, we aren't going to have a future. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think. I think we should kind of more or less go into. Uh, educating our younger people as the elders are they're up there where you know there isn't too much more to be done with them but I, th I think we should start looking towards the younger younger people and get them more interested in school get them help where 
into the fields that they want to get into, you know, engineering, electricians, and things like that. And I don't know, I think a lot of the kids, uh, they don't know themselves what they want. It's up to the parents and the older people to guide them in those ways. Because if we don't, we're going to have a whole mess of dropouts again and just living off of GA and so I think what we should do is just concentrate more on our younger people. I mean even start them out when they're small and uh, keep standing behind them as they get into grade school and high school and I think we'd have a pretty good future if we get those those kids going on, and on the right track. Uh, yeah, because uh, if we don't start concentrating on the culture and the language, I, I'm looking at maybe 20 years from now there isn't going to be a language. There isn't going to be a culture. Because we're not, we're not getting the kids involved in it enough. If we don't, like I say, if we've got to work with them in order to get them involved. Or to leave off. Oh, the culture. Yeah, I think, I think, I think culture is important to the younger generation because if we don't start getting them into their culture, they're going to get to come to a crossroad and they're not going to know which direction to go. They're not going to know if they should be the white man or or go the Indian. You know, they don't have to drop being an Indian. They can still, you know, maintain their culture and still. Because we are living in a white man's world, and we do have to go, you know, to a certain extent, being a white, living with the white people. But their culture is important. I think they should all try to keep their culture and learn their culture, speak their language. It's, I think one of the nicest things today is running into a teenager that can talk his language. I think it's just wonderful. But I don't see it anymore. And it's going to be pathetic when they totally lose it. That's it. All right. What about the use of the money from the dam? Other ways of Education. Okay. Education. Yeah, I think a lot of it should be put into education for the younger younger children and stress, you know, that how important it is to have an education. As we can't just put in so many bucks, you know, and then take it back out and then there's no money for furthering some kid some kid's education that wants to be, make something of himself just because there's no monies available. I think we should put more money into edu an education fund and make sure it's there for the ones that want to further their education. Thank you. You're welcome. Daha. <laughs>